How's it going, everybody? Name's Patrick, and it is it is cold. It is actually really cold. One one second. Now, it may be cold out right now, but what certainly is not cold is the topic of this video, which is long range and snipers. Now, this topic seems to be really polarizing within the uh, gaming community, and I'm going to be fueling the fire here. Um, and hey, do you do you hear that? Do you, do you hear that? What's that noise? The most skill, skill guy in the sniper. He always takes the most skill in all the videos. Ah, that must be all the anime profile pictures retorting in unison. Stereotypically livid that something they like is under scrutiny. And, um, yeah, what's that other... What's that other noise? Is there something else I hear? Killed, killed me, sniper. Nice, I, I Kill walk. Me, cross, cross. Ah, that must be all the incompetent retards that can't seem to comprehend what a sight line is. We're off to a good start here, aren't we? Yeah, we're off to a good start. So as we all know, multiplayer shooters are a remarkably diverse genre of video games. There are games out there that make you feel like this tiny ant in this massive world, and then there are others where you feel like the map is smaller than you are. And then there are some games that are able to capture both of those feelings at the exact same time. There are some games where you're moving around at the speed of sound, and then there's other games where you're constantly moving like there's a broomstick up your rectum. Some games make all the players these really tanky damage sponges, and then others where a stern look and someone's direction will cause them to just ragdoll all over the floor. Multiplayer shooters can vary so much in gameplay and it's such a vague umbrella term that adequately describing a game will require a plethora of subgenres. But the one thing that will connect every single one of them is that you got a bunch of idiots and they all have guns. And the thing with guns is that not all of them will have the same effective range and because games like to both add variety and also represent the real world, we end up with the conventional range range system, and in it there are three basic types of range, long range, mid range, and close range. Now of course there isn't just three easy groups that every gun in every game will fit into. It's really a range of ranges that ranges from really long range to really close range. And on that range of ranges, your range can be here, 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 and even here. And shooters can Stop. limit range by doing a, a few things. The main ones are obviously damage fall off, where bullet damage decreases over distance, uh, weapon inaccuracy at longer ranges, and forcibly just stopping Stop. the bullet, like limiting the distance it can travel. And by the way, almost all modern shooters will have at least two of these three methods. And then there are some more creative ones that uh, we'll get to later. Now if you couldn't tell by now, this video will primarily focus on multiplayer shooters. Multiplayer PvP shooters, actually. And that's just because that's my area of expertise. Though I wouldn't doubt that much of what I have to say has parallels to other types of PvP games. Or even, like, co-op or single-player shooters. I mean range, the concept of range isn't unique to multiplayer shooters. So if you'd like, you can leave a comment about how things from this video may translate over to different genres, or maybe what doesn't translate over. And and uh, you can leave that right beside the comment about how much of a fucking tool I look like. I know. But that isn't the point. What is the point is that I've put thousands of hours over decades playing shooters on console, computers, fucking handhelds, everything really. And something that's always intrigued me is how multiplayer shooters have addressed the range problem. Which is, simply, being outranged is not fun. It's not fun. Dying to a player that's basically on a different fucking planet from you is extremely frustrating. Now I want to make it clear that this is the base problem. And my observations based on how games have dealt with this problem, both good and bad, is why I'm even making this video in the first place. Anyway, the thing with shooters, like I said in the intro, is that they are an extremely diverse genre of games with an astronomical amount of variety. And although the range system exists in almost every game, that does not mean that they treat it the same way. Some games have, quote, close quarters bolt action rifles that in any other game would be this legendary long range titan. And then somehow that makes sense in the context of that game 
where you have this fucking shit here. There are lots of ways games can change how they treat the range system with its three ranges, but the biggest ways are map design, player movement, and the average time to kill. Really, maps, movement, and damage will absolutely determine how powerful of an attribute range is to have on a character, or a class, or weapon, or whatever. And map design being the design of the map, not just the size of the map. I mean like sight lines, choke points, that sort of thing. You know, of course with games with more open maps like Battlefield or Battle Royale games, massive multiplayer, open world, you know, that kind of deal, you need to be really heavy with your range balancing decisions. But in less extreme map settings, you can balance the effectiveness of range with flank routes and cover and sight lines all without even touching the range class or weapon itself. And when I say movement, I really mean all movement, not just player speed, though of course that does matter. But some games have really, really nuanced movement mechanics that, yeah, affect how powerful range is and how it's treated by the game. And when I say average time to kill, I just mean, well, just that. Basically, video games are different from each other, which I, I know, mind-blowing revelations coming from the P Bean channel, but it, it's true. And it's important to keep that in mind as we go through this video. So to see how games have dealt with this problem, let's try and find the root of it. Players don't like dying in ways that feel unfair. When people talk about game balance, it's all about making the mechanics and the games appear as fair to the players. Being able to make player interactions feel fair is what defines a multiplayer game's balance. It's pretty easy to face two guys in front of each other, give them the same guns and a symmetrical map and make that feel fair. But it's way harder to make one of their health pools a lot higher, give one of the them a completely different gun, uh, change their movement up a bit, put them in an asymmetrical map, and have that still feel fair for both sides of the ball sack. <laughs> Remember, we're trying to make it feel fair because this is what proper balance is to the player. It doesn't necessarily mean actual balance. By the very nature of changing attributes to guns and players, we are creating imbalance and imbalanced scenarios. In this sense, multiplayer game balance is a product of the player's perception of fairness and thus can be influenced by forces outside of the literal balance. And this, of course, extends out to the game modes, the maps, and really just like the game itself. And although I'm oversimplifying it a bit, that's the general idea. And now we get back to a long range and we can see why the problem exists. It's because being outranged, especially being really, really outranged, is inherently going to be an unfair interaction. In fact, it's the most basic example of an imbalanced interaction because one party can't even physically retaliate. So how do you make a situation like that feel fair? Well, firstly, we need to understand that it's always going to be an imbalanced interaction. And no matter what, even in good examples where it, it usually feels fair, it's still going to sometimes feel like bullshit. And that's just how it is, and we can't change that. This is actually pretty common, I mean, like shotguns, specific class interactions in certain games, y you know, games are full of these. And secondly, this isn't going to be a direct interaction between two players, so we can't approach it from that angle. And this wouldn't be too bad at all, it's when you mix it with that first thing that it becomes a lot more tricky. Okay, so the expectation from players is that they'll more often than not have some say in their fate. This is pretty standard multiplayer game stuff, but their influence in this interaction can't come from simply being the superior gamer. This influence will come from conscious decisions based on information. Information is what balances the long range interaction, and games that understand this usually have not shit range systems. There's this great video by Shoe Nice nice that's an experiment where the entire line of sight of the sniper in Team Fortress 2 is visible. And it's a really great video because it demonstrates that information is the arbiter of fairness when it comes to long range in multiplayer games. Now I wasn't there for the sniper sightline experiment, but I would argue that making the entire line of sight visible is maybe giving off too much information, but it, one thing is very clear about the base TF2 sniper, and it's that he doesn't give off enough information. If you didn't know, there's this tiny little dot where the sniper is aiming in TF2, and learning how to hide that thing is like the first thing you learn when playing the class. I'm of the opinion that all sniper rifles in almost every single game should have tracer rounds, or bullet trails, or whatever you want to call them. They don't have to be these like sci-fi laser things, just these white 
white streaks to show you where the sniper player is. That way you can use that information to get behind cover. Exposed. You can fire back if aim punch is a mechanic in the game and you're feeling a little bit confident. Oh. Squidward return fire! Use an ability, maybe build a fucking castle, I don't know. But there are other agents for information that games have used, and you can usually separate them into two different groups based on whether or not a shot has to be fired in order for the information to be relayed. And that of course matters a lot because of one-shot kills, and because of things like uh, game modes, teams, the game itself. Oh look, there goes Patrick rambling on again about basic multiplayer game shit. <laughs> Listen, I, I know you get it, but I have to say it again just because of how varying long-range information sharing is. Anyway, let's move away from that and let's just look at some examples of games that use information as a way to balance long-range interaction. Probably one of the most common ones is a sound, which it doesn't sound like much, but depending on the game can be a real game changer. Shh. There's of course the famous minimap that reveals enemy locations after they fire. There's scope glint, which is just like a homing beacon for sniper rifles. I actually really like the concept of scope glint. Somewhat of a more abstract way to communicate information is the expectation of <laughs> sightlines, especially in tactical shooters with very refined metas. Sightlines are something that can go overlooked, unfortunately. Too many people just don't pick up on them. If you want to say the sightlines in a game or map are too powerful and open, that's fine. You're critiquing the literal balance of the game. If you want to say that they aren't enough information for most games and it relies too much on how the map is designed, or that the expectation <laughs> is often too broad because not all sightlines have specific long-range locations, that's fine. You're critiquing them from both a player perception point of view and a literal balance sense. But to just completely ignore them is, is just stupidity. It's one thing to acknowledge them and then have a discussion, but I see these absolute idiots that waltz into the same sightline and die immediately four or five fucking times in a row and then say something dumb in chat. Sightlines aren't perfect, but in games that have them, they are a very real way games communicate long-range information to players. But they are just one way. There are still others like Muzzle Flash, which, like sound, works great in more atmospheric games. Like mentioned, there are tracers and trails, which should be in almost every game. By the way, silenced rifles and long-range weapons? Can we stop that? C can we just cut that out? Why do games feel the need to add silencers? They are just tumors. And if your immediate response to me saying that is, well, why are you complaining about silencers? They always have such a heavy trade-off. They're so bad. You're right, they do have heavy trade-offs, and they are bad. Now, think about that. Silencers exist to limit information further, whether it be sound, muzzle flash, bullet trails, or what have you, with the trade-off usually being, or at least, you know, supposed to be, making the gun shitter. Then think about how much of an absolute goblin you have to be to still have that be your go-to. But the aesthetic is pretty cool, I I I'll give you that. Also, something to note about one-shot kills is that the less a game has them, the more it can get away with only having information that's relayed after a shot without feeling unfair to the player getting shot at. Honestly, getting shot at and not dying is probably the most practical information you can receive about snipers. Having long-range weapons specifically be speedy projectiles is pretty common in games with more open maps, and they often have a pretty meaty visual projectile or tracer rounds with them. Now it'd be good for that reason alone, but it also means that through movement, the player getting shot at can have more input on the outcome. It really does make it more of an interaction. Uh, it also makes sure the snipers themselves aren't too powerful, especially in those big wide open maps where snipers are at their strongest. Speaking of making sure the snipers themselves aren't too powerful, this seems to be a problem a lot of games seem to have. We're now going to move away from talking about information, but that isn't to say I mentioned every single way that information can be conveyed when in reference to long-range snipers. It's just some of the more common and creative ways of conveying information that I felt like mentioning. Now then. What the fuck, Patrick? You already told us what the problem was, and then gave us an answer to the problem. Why the fuck is this video still going? Yeah, I kind of just have more insipid video game shit to talk about. Oh no. Did I really take so long making this video that someone else had to come and make it for me? Oh no. Alright, never mind. This is a totally different video. <laughs> Whew! 
Also, TF2 is the fucking best sniper. More on this later. This is fucking. This is wrong. This is wrong. Good video though. Now then, long range snipers tend to have this problem, or at least it can be a problem, where if they're good at long range, say they're one hit kills, they will also be pretty good at close range, where they should be at a disadvantage by nature of the fact that they're sacrificing close range power for being long range. Long range weapons need to be unwieldy at close range. The reason you see the classic bolt action sniper rifle so much, even in games that have the liberty of making making these sci-fi snipers and stuff like that is because the bolt action rifle is unwieldy at closer ranges, which is what we want here. It's a lot easier to make sure a strong close range weapon isn't a strong long range weapon through ways like this. But you need to be a bit more creative. 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 Creative because it's a lot more challenging to make sure a strong long range weapon isn't strong at close range as well. There's the previously mentioned projectiles and zoom lenses, which make it harder to use at close range. I've seen this charge mechanic a lot in games, and it's not perfect, but it's pretty neat, and I don't see it talked about much. Games can make a damage or accuracy penalty when unzoomed, and obviously it's harder to aim with a 5x zoom lens when all up close and personal. And it's way way harder to aim all close up and personal when you're tunnel visioned with the scope. And depending on how much a game or a specific scope or zoom type in that game wants to lean into that, it can make the area around the reticle perfectly clear, tinted a bit, blurry, blurry and darker, or totally opaque so you can't see around it at all when zoomed in. <laughs> Vision. <laughs> On that note, in games where you can change the zoom of a scope, you have some choice in designating the range of a weapon, whether in-game or in a loadout view, and in many games, the zoom itself is actually how you make a gun long range, or how you make it longer range than other guns. Anyway, so basically, yeah, you really just need to designate the ranges, which just means making long range weapons unwieldy at close ranges, or or, and hear me out here, but you could just kind of say, fuck it. You can just turn the sniper rifle into this fucking super weapon and then balance it some other way, like a high cost or maybe low health on the class that it's on. Just embrace it as part of the gameplay. I mean, in games where every weapon is strong anyway, you might as well just separate shotgun users from sniper users by like the circumference of their balls and uh, their skill. Quick scoping and no scoping when intentional parts of the gameplay really don't differ too much from the shotgun niche, aside from the fact that they should naturally be made worse through aim down sight time, fire rate, making it much more difficult to hit when not aiming, like maybe no crosshair, less accuracy, or even just lower damage when no scoping, maybe a slower speed on the player with the sniper, and of course, shotguns being just easier to hit in general. And then the trade-off for all of that being that you still have a long range range weapon to use and whoa 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 wait a second what what the fuck is that what is that what what are you holding right there oh it's a secondary weapon a what you know most games let you have more than one weapon usually a primary and a secondary the secondary can be used to cover a weakness or in conjunction with the primary what what hold you shut shut up shut the fuck up okay well that's just rude huh <laughs> So now that I'm done explaining something that you already kind of knew, which is that long range weapons should have their close range effectiveness lowered, let's talk about how long range weapons should have their long range effectiveness lowered as well. Wait. What? Okay, wait, just hear me out, hear me out. When you balance the effectiveness of a weapon, class, or nutsack, whatever the fuck you want to talk about, it's usually with the context that this is going to be in a direct interaction with another player. But as we already know, that just isn't how long range interactions work at all. In your typical multiplayer shooter interaction, if one player goofs up and just misses all their shots, the result is that that player is going to lose that fight and die. Meanwhile, in an inter- Meanwhile, in an interaction where one player vastly outranges the other, if that player then misses all their shots, he is not going to die. And so if you can't punish them with their lives, you need to punish them by exposing their information and also with their time. And you can do so through fire rates, uh, reload, ammo consumption, or more creatively like with scopes away or forcing the player to take breaths in between shots to keep their accuracy steady. I hate when games let long range players just find a nice cozy little spot, get out their fucking tent, get out their pillow and just sit there for long <laughs> extended periods of time. 
give them limited ammunition so they need to go resupply and reposition, lower their fire rate, and expose their positions. Long range weapons, guns, and the like are in the situational extremes of balance, so no matter what, you can be sure that if a sniper is involved, it's going to be an unfair interaction one way or the other. And it can be really tricky to make sure that long range players still feel like they're strong enough to justify having a close range weakness while not making their area denial too strong and too annoying to fight against. No one's shedding a tear for the snipers that die because they were flanked or something in games where their close range effectiveness is shit because we as players understand the trade-off they're making and understand that the sniper players understand that trade-off also. Just because something, anything, is weak in one situation does not mean it can't be too strong in a different situation. And I hate hearing people say that because players who opt for a long range playstyle are making a close range sacrifice that there's now basically no limit to how strong they should be at long range, where, you know, people can't even fucking physically retaliate or don't even know there's someone about to shoot them before they die. It's example time. Let's look at the sniper from Team Fortress 2 because we've already talked about him and I feel like I have at least some authority on TF2. The TF2 sniper is super polarizing and is talked about a lot. Let's look at the goods nice. and the bads. He has a little dot where he's aiming that can give away his position. That's good. It isn't nearly enough information, can easily be hidden, and only works on actual surfaces. That's bad. He has to charge up a shot to deal full damage, which takes time and punishes him for missing. That's good. He has more reserve ammo than he'll ever need, he never needs to reload, and could one-shot most classes with a headshot without charging at all. That's bad. He has poor close-range effectiveness and exists in a game with lots of movement-y boys that can close the distance. That's good. His area denial and general effectiveness is more affected by how the map is designed than any other class in the game and can be way more powerful than was probably intended because of sight lines. That's bad. Proposed changes? Give all sniper rifles tracer rounds. Reduce his ammo count to 10 to 15 bullets. Give him a long reload animation every 4 to 5 shots. And that's it. Quick and painless, no damage nerf, no quickscope nerf, just punishing him more with his time for missing his shots. Which helps nerf his area denial, especially on those maps with crazy sight lines, and making him less frustrating to fight from the tracer rounds. And how do I know tracer rounds will make the sniper feel less frustrating for every class that gets killed by him? Because we already have a gun that fires tracer rounds in the game. In conclusion to this video, I think it's important to remember that players will optimize all the fun out of a game and then some, and if the optimal way to play a game is in a way that isn't fun, it's a game design problem and not like a player base problem or something like that. The problem with range isn't a problem that's specific to any one multiplayer game because it's simply entailed by the desire of multiplayer shooters to want to have different equipment for different players, and it usually isn't as simple as just nerfing the fire rate in order for higher range and higher damage, but sometimes it is that simple, honestly. Game developers understand that intentionally staying out of combat isn't really some people's cup of nuts, but they want to make sure it's still a relatively fun gameplay experience when you encounter people that have that as their cup of nuts, where they want to stay out of combat and snipe people from longer ranges. It's just that some games do it a lot better than others. So let's briefly go over everything I've learned from my observations. Range as a concept comes from the desire of developers to add gun variety to their games. Although the range problem exists in every multiplayer shooter, the severity of it will change based on external factors, mainly maps, movement, and average time to kill. Players generally dislike dying in ways that feel unfair or like they had no input, but because of the intentional design of the range system in multiplayer games, it is going to be unfair. Long range interactions aren't normal player to player interaction and information usually plays a vital role in making sure both players feel like they had an input on the outcome. Long range should be a trade off for close range or some other attribute, it can, you can't just stick a 5x scope on any gun and call it a day. And lastly, all sniper and long range players are just cowards and pussies. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, that's a wrap. Uh, that's the end of the, the main video. This is the part where I take off the, um, 
<laughs> the gamer personality mostly just to say thanks for watching. Uh, the video wasn't nearly as controversial or interesting as the intro made it seem, but but hey, I gotta, gotta reel people into watching somehow, right guys? Once again, I encourage you to leave a comment. I, I will read them all. I, I won't respond to every comment, but if you take the time to write some dumb shit on my dumb video, I'll take the time to read it. And I hate saying this because it means I have to deal with the people that say, oh, oh, oh you read every comment? You, did you read this one? Yes, I, I did. My pride is hurt and I want to respond, but I, I feel bad responding to this dumb shit that I've seen a million times when someone just left like a detailed essay or something. But if you leave something down there, then yeah, I will read it. If somehow this wasn't enough talk about long range and snipers, there are other videos online. There are lots of videos about the sniper in TF2, since lots of people have very justified critiques of how Valve balanced the sniper back in 2007. Holy shit. Uh, I already mentioned the arch video yeah, and it was it was good. It was really different from this one. It dealt more with examples of the literal balance of snipers. His conclusion, I don't really agree with. Uh, the charge mechanic should not be thrown into games, and also most games don't really deal with a balance problem. They deal with a frustration problem. But anyway, so yeah, sorry this video took another six months. The script for it has been in production for a few years and has gone through so many revisions. It, it was difficult picking what to leave in or out, and e even now it's a mess. Longer scripts are something I'm still working to get better at. Let's just pretend it's meant to pair well with the intentional visual incongruity and wackiness. So it's some, you know, beautiful art piece or something. I, I, I love making the visuals. If you ever watch a section and think, why does it look like this? The answer is just that it was a weekend editing project I did for fun or something. There are some specific parts that are questionable at best and should have been remade, but I have a weird pride in how scuffed it all looks. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Video. And also, thanks for watching the end of the video where I just fart into a mic for a little bit. Uh, I'll see you all next year. That was that was a joke, by the way. I hope. All right, bye.